is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go unto the altar of God, to God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves, that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now let us recite the second form of the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come up to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. But when the kindness and generous love of God, our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we have done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Holy Trinity, triune God, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Turn our wanderings into a pilgrimage, 
drawing us ever closer to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living and reigning as one God forever and ever. On this, the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, the first reading is taken from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in the cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, if I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm for today is taken from the book of Daniel. And the response is, glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. The second reading for today is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. God so loved the world 
that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him whoever believes in him will not be condemned but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered to hear the word. In today's first reading from the book of Exodus, we find Moses meeting God after receiving the Ten Commandments. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lord, I the Lord am a merciful and gracious God, slow in anger, and rich in kindness and fidelity. To this Moses, after bowing, said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. Merriam-Webster defines the term stiff-necked as being haughty and stubborn. Some of the synonyms or similar words to being stiff-necked are arrogant, lofty, lordly, pompous, presuming, superior, and uppish. While some of the antonyms or opposite words of being stiff-necked are humble, lowly, modest, unarrogant, and unpretentious. Being stiff-necked in biblical terms was a person or a people who were unwilling to be led. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 9, we read, I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. And in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 7, verse 51, we read, You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Did not Jesus begin his Sermon on the Mount by saying, Blessed are you who are humble, for yours is the kingdom of God. The good news that Jesus preached during his short ministry was addressed mainly to the poor, the downtrodden, and the disconnected people separated from mainline society. He proclaimed his mission when he stood up in his local synagogue in Nazareth and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me 
to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Our country is currently facing two pandemics. The first is the COVID-19 pandemic, which began in China in December of 2019. This pandemic has already claimed the lives of over 108,000 people in our country alone, with no immediate resolution. The other pandemic is social injustice, which has existed in our country for over 400 years. The one common de denominator to both of these pandemics is its mode of transmission. For both pandemics have spread and continue to spread, affecting the health and wellness of not only the bodies of individuals, but also the soul of our nation. While we search for a vaccine to combat the coronavirus, the remedy for social injustice is already available and is found in the hearts, in the minds, and in the consciousness of society. The good news of Jesus, as found in the New Testament, was never meant to be, to be kept stored away in a book, but rather to be applied and extended to every corner of our society, in our country, and around our world. This is what we call the social gospel of Jesus. Jesus' words were not intended just for single individuals, but rather to serve as standards and a benchmark for our society. It is the words of Jesus that we find redemption, salvation, and freedom that are given to all who would seek the wisdom of God and build upon the principles of love, empathy, compassion, forgiveness, and peace. When we speak of the social gospel, we speak of a Christian faith that is practiced and a call not just to personal conversion, but also to social reform. So what reforms do we need in our society today? Reforms to address social injustice, social indifference, racism, bigotry, brutality at the hands of police, as well as economic equality and poverty. We see many of these messages on the countless placards and signs carried by thousands of people in so many cities and countries around our world. We witness it in the peaceful, in the silent protest by so many in support over the death of George Floyd, who died on May 25, 2020, at the hands of members of the Minneapolis Police Department. But George Floyd was not the first victim of that which negatively plagues our nation, and unfortunately, he will not be the last. The Reverend Al Sharpton, who offered the eulogy at the memorial service for George Floyd, said, It is time for us to stand in George's name and say, Get your knee off our necks. This is in reference to the death of George Floyd, where ex-officer Derek Chauvin knelt on his neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, 
while two other ex-police officers participated, one kneeling on his back, while George Floyd was handcuffed, lying face down, and another who held down his feet. I can't breathe, Mama, I can't breathe, were his last words. But at his memorial service, we read this message. George Floyd now can breathe. My dear brothers and sisters, it is so sad that we have seen in the wake of the gathering for George Floyd, those individuals who choose anarchy, who ransack and loot stores and supermarkets, who set fires, who battle with police and kill others. They have attempted to take away the importance of the need for our great nation to come together in unity and to address the systemic problems that have long existed and still exist to this day. In the United, United States Pledge of Allegiance, we commit our lives to the pursuit of liberty and justice for all. The phrase for all is inclusive, not discriminatory. For all means we aim to protect and provide liberty and justice for all individuals, regardless of gender, race, sexual preference, economic status, political ideology, or religious background. May we all pause but for a moment and consider the importance of not being stiff-necked, but rather humble, where we all need to live and recall the golden rule which exists in all five major religions, which teaches do unto others as you would have done unto you. May we treat one another as we would be treated. Speak to one another as we would want to be spoken to. And finally, to love one another as we would want to be loved. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Trinity in unity, as we offer our gifts of self and substance, we ask you to make them holy. Grant us an understanding of your inner life. For to that living mystery we have all been called. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what we believe of your glory, through your revelation, we also believe of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, without difference or distinction. In confessing the true and eternal Godhead, we adore the distinction of persons, oneness in being, and equality in majesty. Therefore, on this most special day, we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants and handmaidens, O Lord. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the homeless and for the hungry, for the unemployed, for all abused and neglected children in our world, to all those who stand in peace and unity for our nation, as well as all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. And all your presence, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praise Worthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless to accept and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember our brothers and sisters who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Now look at our sins, brother, the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, and reign forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ,
the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise. Will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, what we have received on her lips, may we receive mentally, and may this terrible gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, and whom these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Je Jesus Christ and the source of the Spirit, you are the creator of all that exists and the originator of all that is good. You loved us in Christ even before the world was formed. Grant through this Holy Eucharist that our whole lives may be only a return to you from our first beginning through baptism in your holy name to our final goal. We ask this through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Speak your God. to share in our celebration of the Holy Mass of the Eucharist. It is my prayer that the good Lord watch over all of you and your loved ones and would bless us at this time and bless our great nation. And now let us offer a final prayer for not only the living but also for our faithful departed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. In perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 